approach to a patient with acute confusion, let's begin our course using P3 Maftosa, 3 P's, S, present complaint, past complaints, personal history. Let's start with present complaints. Do you mind if I ask you what has brought you into hospital? Here, can you please tell me more about it? 4. Diagnosis of delirium We will apply the confusion assessment method. First step includes the onset and course. So ask, is this a sudden change in behavior from baseline? Does abnormal behavior come and go during the day? Second component of CAM tool is attention span. Simply ask, does he have difficulty focusing or is he easily distracted? Thirdly, do you have difficulty following his conversation? It provides us a clue about disorganized thinking. Finally, ask about the level of consciousness. Does the patient have episodes of drowsiness or agitation? The diagnosis of delirium requires the presence of 1 and 2 plus either 3 or 4. Let's ask for further details using mnemonics. Opera, onset. In what way is his behavior different from usual? How did it start? Did it come gradually or all at once? Duration. Ask, how long is it present? Sudden onset of short duration confusion is suggestive of delirium, whereas slow onset with gradual progression points towards dementia. Progression. Ask, since the onset of the symptoms, is it getting better or worse? Is it the first time, or do you have similar complaints in the past, as well? If there is a history of a similar episode in the past, assess how frequently it is happening, as Delirium follows a course of reversible and fluctuating impairment in cognitive function and consciousness. However, dementia is progressive and irreversible. Aggravating factor. Is there anything that makes it worse? Relieving factor. Have you noticed what makes it better? Associated symptoms. Usually, drug and alcohol withdrawal, meningitis, encephalitis are the leading causes of acute confusion in younger patients. However, in the older age group, polypharmacy, infection of any reason, electrolyte imbalance, and stroke are predominant causes of confusion. A thorough systems review is necessary for determining the cause of acute confusion in the elderly. Let's ask specific questions to establish a definitive diagnosis and rule out the possible causes that may result in acute confusion. Regarding neurological causes, ask focus questions such as headache, fever, photophobia, Next ifness to rule out meningitis. Next, history of head injury may provide a clue for a subdural hematoma in the elderly. Furthermore, confusion can be a manifestation of stroke. However, the presence of limb weakness, sensory disturbance, dysphagia, visual impairment, vomiting, vertigo, and dysphagia will provide supportive evidence for this cause. Moreover, a detailed history of seizures is essential, if here is a strong suspicion of postictal confusion. Next, ask about fever, behavioral and personality change to rule out encephalitis. Next, ask about urinary symptoms. How frequently do you have to pass urine? Do you have trouble holding urination until you get to the toilet? Do you have to wake up at night to go to the toilet? Do you feel fullness even after passing urine? How is your flow of urine? Is it continuous? Or is there any dribbling after urination? Do you have to strain during urination? Do you have to wait before starting urination? Do you have to rush to the toilet for urination? As dysuria, frequency, urgency, incontinence, and suprapubic pain suggest urinary tract infection, a significant cause of delirium in the elderly. For respiratory causes of confusion, ask about cough, productive sputum, dyspnea and pleuritic chest pain suggestive of chest infection as a cause of confusion. Pulmonary embolus, asking about pleuritic chest pain, hemoptysis, and any risk factor like a recent surgery or traveling. Meanwhile, cardiac causes, congestive heart failure, myocardial infarction, or arrhythmia may cause confusion. So, detailed inquiry about chest pain, dyspnea, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, ankle swelling, palpitations, dizziness, and syncope is essential. Next, gastrointestinal causes like hepatic encephalopathy and clostridium difficile colitis is a cause of acute confusion. So ask about any recent hospitalization or prolonged antibiotics use to support the diagnosis of clostridium difficile colitis. Moreover, inquire about diet, as a strict vegetarian diet may be a clue for vitamin B12 deficiency. Regarding psychiatric causes, 
ask about behavioral problems such as aggression, visual hallucinations, delusions, and personality change, past complaints, similar complaints, has anything like this has happened to you, for how long, what did you take for it, is it well controlled, are you taking any medication, ask about the current drug regime, and inquire about, addition of new medications, changes in doses of current medications, abrupt withdrawal from medications such as benzodiazepines and opiates, thiazide, lupin potassium sparing diuretics, insulin, oral hypoglycemics, digoxin, lithium, benzatropine, procyclidine, amitriptyline, imipramine, citalopram, sertraline, oxybutynin, and corticosteroids may cause confusion. Do you have any long-time medical condition? If yes, then ask how long, is it well controlled? Ask about, any history of dementia, diabetes, decompensated liver disease, epilepsy, Parkinson's disease, malignancy, and HIV. Ask about hospitalization, saying, have you ever been hospitalized? If the patient says yes, then ask, for what reason? For example, for any procedure like a biopsy. Next step is, personal complaints. I'm going to ask you a few personal questions, and whatever you say will be confidential. Smoking. Do you smoke? If say yes, then ask, how many cigarettes do you smoke a day? For how long have you been smoking? Tell me about your sleep. Do you drink alcohol? If the patient says yes, proceed by asking what do you prefer to drink? How much? For how long have you been drinking like this? Delirium tremens presence as a result of alcohol withdrawal. It is characterized by acute confusion, disorientation, agitation, and inattention. Moreover, Wernicke's encephalopathy occurs due to thiamine deficiency secondary to alcoholism. How is your appetite? Recreational drugs. By any chance, do you take recreation drugs? If it says yes, then proceed by asking, sorry to ask you, but what do you do? How do you take it? If injecting, ask, by any chance do you use a new needle all the time? For how long you are doing this? Do you use any other recreational drugs? Weight change. Have you been weighing on the higher side? If yes, ask about bowel habits. How often do you open your bowels? Have you noticed any change? Sexual history. Are you sexually active? If the patient is sexually active, then ask, sorry to ask you this but are you in a stable relationship? For how long? Are you on any contraception? Did you travel abroad before your symptoms? Did you have any sexual relationship there? If the patient is a female, ask about four P's. Period, LMP. When were your last periods? If more than four weeks, then she might be pregnant. How many days did they last? Are they irregular? Do you get pain? Any bleeding between your periods or after intercourse? Are you on pills? Pregnancy. If she is not active, so she is not pregnant, then ask, have you ever been pregnant? Duration of pregnancy? Mode of delivery? How many children do you have? Any miscarriage or abortion? Any complications before, during, or after pregnancy? Pap smear. When did you have your last pap smear? What was the report? Was it normal? If it is abnormal, have you booked an appointment with GP? Allergy. Family history. For carcinoma history in a family is essential, ask, I am very sorry to ask, but anyone in your family is diagnosed with a sinister disease, cancer, travel history, have you recently traveled abroad, inquire about fresh water swimming in areas with schistosomiasis, occupation history what do you do for a living, ask about the nature of the work, whether he has had to take time off from work due to your symptoms, social history, where do you live, whom do you live with, do you drive, inquire about the functional status of the patient, particularly the impact on the activities of daily living, anything else you want to tell me. Now, in the end, take your time for an impression. Then, turn to the examiner and say based upon my history, my most probable diagnosis is this. My differentials are this, this and that, and I should have ruled out this and that. Thank you for watching. Stay connected and subscribe to this channel for more interesting medical professional videos. And, good luck with your exam.